G'day guys, I've had a few questions in these last few weeks about simplifying and rationalizing uh, expressions that involve thirds. So I thought I would take two different expressions that I think are a good representation of all the inquiries that I get about uh, thirds and functions that involve thirds. And I'm going to just try and, well I'm going to try, I'm going to solve both of these for you guys right now. So basically the first one, we're going to be asked to simplify this expression up the top. And I think what makes this a little bit tricky for people to see what they have to do first is because we have a divide sign here rather than just a fraction like what we see below. So what I'll do is I'm going to convert this straight into a fraction where I have 5 times the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 8. Now, this is equal to, we're going to use this third law here where we have the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. So we're going to use this in the bottom or the denominator of this fraction where I'm going to say this is 5 root 2 divided by square root of 2 times the square root of 4, because 2 times 4 is 8. Now what we can do from here is we can see that there is a square root of 2 on the top numerator and a square root of 2 in the denominator, so these will just cancel out. And I'm left with 5 over square root of 4. Now I can't leave it like that, we can't leave a third in the denominator, we need to rationalise this. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this by basically by 1, but a different one written in a slightly different way. We're going to write it as the square root of 4 divided by the square root of 4. Now so that's just equal to 1, let's just write that as a little note to ourselves. So this thing here is just equal to one. So if I do this multiplication I'm going to have 5 times root 4 which on the numerator is 5 square root 4 and then in the denominator we have root 4 times root 4 which is just 4. The square root of 4 times the square root of 4 is just 4. And that my friends is the expression or the simplified expression which represents this expression up here. So basically you can think of that last step that I took as being another, I don't know, third law where we have, if we have the square root of a number times by the square root of the same number, it just equals that number. Now I hope you can see that green there. All right, so on to the next question. So for this one here, we're going to have to rationalize the denominator. Now the way that we rationalize the denominator is we use a tool or a concept that you might have learnt in lower school called the difference of perfect squares. Now what that is, is if we have a quadratic function and we factorize it like this, x plus a, x minus a, if we multiply this out, we're going to get x squared minus a squared. So if we can multiply the, de the um, denominator, which in this case would be this x plus a, by a similar term, but rather than having plus 2, we have minus 2, we'll be able to get rid of the thirds in the denominator. And I'll show you how just now. So change colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, this is 6 divided by the square root of 5 plus the square root of 2. And I'm going to times this again by 1. But this time I'm going to write 1 as the square root of 5 minus the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 5 minus the square root of 2. So you can see here again, little note to ourselves, 
this is still equal to 1 this whole this entire thing here cool so next step in the numerator it's quite easy to see that I'm just going to go 6 times square root of 5 which is going to be 6 square root 5 and then I'm going to add sorry not add subtract that to 6 times the square root of 2 which is just 6 square root 2 because basically what you can think of is when we multiply this together I'm going to go 6 times this one and 6 times that one all right and what I'm going to do in the denominator is I'm just going to leave it to start with in a form like this so I'm going to have square root of 5 plus square root of 2 square root of 5 minus square root of 2 cool now can we do anything on the top I don't think so all we could do is maybe factorize by the square root of by 6 but it's not really going to help us. So we're going to leave the top as it is and it's right square root of 6 square root of 5 minus 6 square root of 2 all divided by now. This is the interesting part. I'll do this sort of long form so you guys understand what we're doing but when we've done it you'll see that this is just going to be the solution here. So I'm going to go square root of 5 times square root of 5 is just 5. I'm going to go square root of 5 times minus square root of 2 minus square root of 10 then I'm going to go the inside so square root of 2 times square root of 5 is plus square root of 10 and I have square root of 2 times negative the square root of 2 is minus 2. Cool. So I can just, let's extend that there out a bit. Looks a bit whack, but that's okay. Now, what can we do from here? Well, I have 5 minus 10 plus 10, so these 10s are going to cancel out. And what I'm going to have in the bottom now is just simply 5 subtract 2, which is 3. Cool. Now that we have that, let's factorize the top. So we're going to have 6 outside of square root of 5 minus square root of 2, all divided by 3. Now the 6 and the 3 will simplify. A 2 and a 1, which leaves us with 2 square root 5 minus 2 square root 2. Cool. So you can see in the end that um, when I did this difference of perfect squares in the denominator, it was akin to just doing this. Because if you notice, if I have the x's like where the square root of 5 was, this is going to equal just x squared, which is going to, in our case, is going to be square root 5 squared. Now if we have the square root of a number squared, that's just going to equal the number. So if I have square root of 5 squared, I'm just going to equal 5. What happens is we don't have to worry about the inside terms because they cancel each other out, but then we just multiply it by the outside term squared. So we have the outside term which was square root of 2, squared is just 2. So we subtract that from 5 and we get our value of 3. The rest of it is just, you know, doing simple like arithmetic, making sure that you see where the um, fractions are going to simplify and also just not making any, you know, silly, silly mistakes. So there you go, guys. That's how you, um, those are two sort of fairly stock standard um, questions that involve thirds and simplifying them. You know, you're not really going to see too much difference. There's not going to be too many extra techniques that you're going to have to learn. But if you master ones of this level, I'm sure you'll be fine with any level ones. So I hope this video helped, guys. If it did, um, you know, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, 
If there are any videos that you'd like to see, leave them in the comments section below. But until next time, guys, enjoy your maths.